Hey everybody, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at the Bora Lumber Rack. Uh, this thing went in super easy and as you can see gave me great storage for my lumber. I added two of them along this long wall. I also went ahead and built a mobile cart rummaging some other items in the shop and you'll have to stay tuned to see how I did that. But it's got nice shelves on one side and vertical storage for stuff on the back. So stay tuned, keep watching and we'll go into detail on both of these items. What's up everybody? So, you know I'm not one to throw stuff away. I like to hoard things and hang on to them and use them down the line. And if you've watched any of my content over the past couple years, you'll know that. Well, you know, I just did that Rycon upgrade and installed that Super Dust Deputy. Well, this is the mobile cart that the base was on. So, what I decided to do, because I'm tired of tripping over this thing and I need storage, I'm going to make a storage tower for some of my uh, small cutoffs of my lumber. I may use it for other things like storage for parts at the CNC. Who knows? But I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to add some shelves. I'm going to have some extra storage, some cool little knickknacks. You're just going to have to wait and see what I do with it. But hey, let's start it off. Now, got the holes drilled. Got my first piece for the base for the base. All right. Well, as the song goes, it's all about that base. Well, in this case, it is. I uh, took that uh, scavenged base off the Rikon and we are certainly working drilling out these holes and I used uh, self-tapping machine screws to hold this initial base layer of uh, MDF to the uh, the cart and I figured that'll be strong enough for what I'm trying to do. I probably could have used liquid nail or something to ensure it held but hey you know this is a shop cart. I may change my mind later. So here I'm, I'm drawing out the uh, back and on this back I've got uh, the different shelf levels uh, it's going to be kind of unique. Half of the back is going to have uh, a small short uh, support for small stock and then the other half of the back is going to wind up being for long stock up to four feet or taller but you get the idea. So it's going to be kind of unique and different. So it's going to have shelves for doing flat work and then these uh, notched out areas for longer stock because that seems to be a place where you know, always looking for a place to store stuff. So this will work out pretty well. Anything longer than that, well, I can go over on the Bora uh, wood rack or on the back side of my plywood rack. So just, you know, storage is storage. And you can see here, I've got it up on the saw and I'm uh, fastening everything together. And you're looking at it from the top. That I'm working on the top down, getting the uh, top part of the carcass together. And I'm using the, um, the nice no more countersink bit from a mana. Uh, I think we're fantastic on this. And this is all scavenged. I was trying to get a quick measurement there. Uh, make sure I can stand it up without it hitting uh, anything at the ceiling. But the beauty of this setup is it's going to work well. Uh, so, you know, start at the top. I knew what my shelf needed to be. Made myself some scab blocks to put in there to support that shelf. And put some glue and uh, brad nailed it to hold it. While then I come back and put the screws in later. I really wish it, I worked this fast. And I've had some people ask, well, why in the world do you just show all these hyperlapsed fast speed videos? Well, too many people do this and they just take shortcuts and show you the snippets you know, at the end. I want you to see a lot of the work that goes into putting this together so that you can see some of the little jigs and little fixtures and little tricks uh, for assembling some of these parts. So, well, instead of just short, showing you short snippets, I thought I'd show you the whole thing but just sped way up so you know let me know your thoughts on that you know if you like it more sped up or you're kind of seeing all the work going on or do you prefer the snippets with you know minimal details and I manhandled that thing got it set down on the ground so I could finish working on the the rest of the bottom shelves but they're at the top you get the idea but this gives you a first glimpse here of uh, what's happening with this shelf. You can see the, the, sm the smaller notch there on the right hand side compared to the uh, full notch at the top. And just kind of give you a little glimpse at that. But a little process working through it. Again, screw, screw, screws and glue. Can't even say it. I'm um, getting this thing all together. Uh, but you'll notice here that this is a lot of different materials. I've got some scrap plywood. I've got MDF. Uh, I've got different types of scrap plywood. So just I wanted to use scavenged materials to get the rest of this thing assembled. Yeah, admiring my work. Manhandling again. Let's put this thing on this cart. Notice all that crap on the chair. Yep, 
admiring my work a little bit more. Let's kick the tires. Yeah, I do this when I buy a car too. But get the old size 11 against it, works pretty well. It's mobile, doesn't have a lot of resistance. The wheels turn free. I kind of wanted to give it a test run before I went on through. So everything looks good, so now I'm gonna work on the dividers for the shells. And you can see here, I put a little L-type uh, setup on that, and I made a notch out for a cross piece. Uh, that cross piece is there mainly to kind of help add a little stability, especially since I'm using MDF here. Uh, but more importantly, that's going to serve a good purpose here once these shelves kind of come together, and you'll be able to see that, that divider and how that's going to work. A lot of glue and screws going into this rascal. Now from the back side or the shelf side, uh, that divider is also going to act like a stopping point so, so materials don't impede on my storage area. And I just wanted to throw some things in there to kind of see what that looked like. Put a bunch of scraps in there and then I cleaned off one of my other shelves to get some of the other short stock. I have a lot of short stock, but it's all nice solid wood, maple, walnut, all the nice exotics and stuff. But so far so good and I like the way it's working. Okay, well here it is. <clears throat> uh, still got to get some stuff organized. Man, I got to figure out what to do with all this MDF. I cut out a lot of speaker parts, so I got a lot of templates, little discs and things. I've been saying I'm going to see and see some little somethings out of them, but well, yeah. Um, the back side of this little spinny base uh, has a short pocket for smaller, shorter pieces, uh, then a larger pocket for uh, longer pieces. Uh, right now I've just got some stuff filled in there, some drawer uh, runners. Hey, by the way, I don't know if you see it. I haven't seen that chair in two years. Look at that. Anyway. There's my little rolly rack organizer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, got some more things I'm going to do to it, but for now, that's good to go. There's a nice little 360 view of that thing. Get me out of the way so you can get a little better glimpse. Not too bad. Very functional. Works. Move it all around the shop. Do what I need it to do. Well, first things first, since I bought two of these, let's get one of them open anyway. These things go together pretty well. Um, you basically get, you know, two uprights, and then you get a couple of, uh, you know, six legs for each upright. Uh, there's little spacers that go between them, and when you go to mount them on the wall, which I'll show you later, there's little bumpers that mount on the back, and what those do is kind of keeps that spaced off properly. But now that I got that assembled, which was quick work, uh, it's time to unload the old one. Now this um, method worked pretty well. This uh, the old rack did well, but uh, I got to the point where I needed more wood, more spacing, and um, I needed something that would allow me to have that. And I tinkered around with a lot of ideas and wound up just just going with the uh, Bora, just simply because it it was strong, it was versatile, and of course the the spacing giving me six shelves across there was going to work out real well. And so I took these down, and I do have another video, and you can probably see that up at the top corner. Go check that out on how to make how to make those. And they work really well for exposed studs. Uh, but eventually, I plan on hopefully sheathing that and insulating that. And so this is one step towards that. Where if, when I get ready, I'll be able to just uh, take those down, sheath it, and then they'll go right back up. These did very well and served their purpose for you know, especially for what I needed to do. But now that I got them off, it's time to measure out for the new layout. And what I wanted to do, of course, get these things level. So I've got the first one up here, get it ready. And I'm going to go ahead and get it screwed to the wall, down from the ceiling and up from the plywood rack at the right height. I did take the time to make sure that wasn't going to be a problem. And of course, I want that second one to be level with the first. And so here we go. Using my good level here, making sure it's right. Get a pre-marked hole. Mount that lag screw through there, and then uh, that spacer, of course. 
and I'm just going to go through here and get all of the top uh, lag bolts installed and then work my way back across. It was a little bit more of a span there than what my forefoot level would give me. So that window is going to create problems. I have a feeling one day I'm just going to close it off and make it solid. I don't use it anyway and I'm using wood to cover it so I might as well just you know, take it out or board it up or something. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be on some video somewhere sometime down the road. Anyway, this back corner was tight, especially with that uh, door hardware in the way. That track was quite the pain. And that was the other reason why I wanted to go, go with a system like this. It allows me a little more versatility to be able to reach over or under depending on what I need to do based on the shelf track and the door and everything else that's in my way in my shop. Anyway, I'm making quick work of that get all those lag bolts in and it's going together pretty well yeah I would give that border rack probably four out of five stars now comes the real test let's get that lumber on there and I'm pretty particular about certain things obviously not about shop cleanliness but I am about storage because I want everything to be functional and you know have a place and whatnot. So taking my time getting these all right. Uh, I'm starting out with my rough normal wood and then on top I'm putting my rough lumber 2x4, 2x6, things like that. Don't have a lot of that but anyway so far so good. Very happy with the end result. All right, well, there you go. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell so you're notified for future videos. But as for today's, I hope you enjoyed how easy this was for me to install and how much versatility and organization it added to my shop. Really, really gonna make a difference. And this has already made a difference. I can make cuts on the table saw, load my cart, take it to the CNC for final cutoff pieces, or just use it as a component here around the shop to haul things around just to keep my projects organized. Anyway, hope you liked it. If you did or didn't, leave me a comment below and let me know. Maybe you got a better idea for either of these two options that I chose. Hey, always willing to learn. So, looking forward to hearing from you. And then, uh, if I don't hear from you, we'll see and see you next time on the next video. Have a great day.